Hi everybody, I'm Dan Wells. I write horror, fantasy, and science fiction, and I talk about games on the internet. And today we are talking about horror and science fiction, two of my genres. Uh, this is Splicers. We are back to Palladium Books again. Uh, and this is one of my favorite of their games uh, because it is just a brilliant body horror science fiction game. Uh, one of the things that I think I've always been impressed with Palladium's ability to take great ideas. I mean, they're like the idea factory and then turn them into whatever else they are. They are also great adventure games. Um, so Beyond the Supernatural is a really wonderful kind of uh, X-Files style supernatural investigation game that also has a lot of opportunity for adventure. Um, Nightbane, which is this kind of classic, almost White Wolf style angst gaming, I'm a monster, what do I do? But combined with this really kind of high octane adventure game at the same time. What Splicers is, like I said, is science fiction body horror that is also a really kind of thrilling adventure game that is able to do wonderful body horror and this incredible dystopian scenario and setting while also having this kind of fun, action-packed adventure side to it. Let me tell you a little bit about Splicers. I don't have the PDF for this. I've just got a physical book. Um, and as you can see, this one is in actually really nice condition. It's uh, one that I've read. Uh, cover to cover several times, but uh, have never actually gotten the chance to play because uh, this came out so late in, uh, what what year was this? 2004, uh, which at that point I could no longer convince my friends to play Palladium games with me. Uh, but back in 2004, before I was published, before I was a professional storyteller, um, this is actually, Splicers is the first game that I attempted to, I actually submitted an adventure to the Rifter, which is Palladium Books uh, magazine that they used to run uh, that has all kinds of user-created, fan-created content. Uh, and I wrote a Splicers adventure and submitted it. They didn't pick it up, and that's fine. Uh, but that's how much this game caught my imagination. It was one of the very first games that made me think, you know what? This is so brilliant, I need to follow this up. So let me tell you about Splicers and what it is. Um, basically, the idea is that the human race has gone to a new planet. They have uh, colonized, they have populated this uh, planet that's out there in deep space somewhere. And they created an artificial intelligence to run their society for them to kind of take care of little things like trash pickup and groundskeeping and, you know, lots of things that help a society to run. This is the deep cut backstory, and we're, we're getting to what the actual game is about, but you gotta let me tell you this story because it's a really good one. So, the different factions within the government, of course, all have their priorities. Some people want this AI to protect the people. Some of them want it to protect the environment. Some of them want it to, um, you know, create new jobs and provide for compelling lived experience for the citizens of the planet. All of these different priorities are often in direct conflict with each other. But because it was not just a bureaucratic legal system, but an actual artificial intelligence trying to reconcile all of these different priorities eventually drove it insane. Today, the AI has seven distinct personalities, each of which is kind of a fracture of that original uh, AI that is focused on one of these major areas of, of interest. So there is one who is trying to protect the environment. There's another one who's trying to get rid of garbage. There's another one who is uh, trying to keep people safe, and so on and so on. But here's the thing. Because the AI running the world was insane, 
because it could not reconcile the different jobs it was given, it eventually snapped and something flipped a switch and it started to identify human beings as vermin to be exterminated. And this we've seen before, right? This is basically Skynet. Um, the fact that it is multiple personalities makes it, in my opinion, a little more interesting, a little more believable than Skynet. But we've seen rogue AIs try to kill everyone. Where this one is different is that its method of killing everyone was to create a nanovirus. Little nanobots that go out and by themselves, they don't kill people. What they do is they infect any mammalian life that they encounter on this planet. And then when they, when that infected individual comes into contact with metal of any kind, that those nanobots come out and they remake that metal into a deadly murderer of some kind. And so instantly, all the technology that the people relied on became lethal. Imagine something as simple and as harmless as a grocery store. Now every shopping cart, every can, every fork, knife, spoon, every pole, anything metal whatsoever could turn into and would turn into an assassin. And so you'd be walking along and uh, accidentally, you know, step on, let's say, a fork that fell off of a table, and then that fork would turn into a horrible monster and start trying to, you know, stab you or kill you or, or slice you open in some way. This obviously destroyed civilization, and the few human survivors were able to find, you know, little holes they could hide in out in the middle of the wilderness. And there are still cities that are still around, but they don't have people in them. Um, and so this is where, you know, one thing that happened, for example, was that one of those insane AI personalities was like, well, these cities are supposed to be for people and those people are supposed to have jobs. And so created a bunch of androids. And so one thing that exists on this city are these, uh, or on this planet, are cities full of kind of mindless, soulless robots going through the motions of daily life. They will go to work and they will sit and they will pretend to type and then they will walk home and then they will sit and pretend to watch TV. And it's this very kind of spooky, like I said, soulless thing. But the bigger deal and the core of the whole game is that out in the wilderness, those few human survivors were able to develop a biological technology. And this is where the body horror comes in. Because the only way that they could fight back against the uh, AI, against not just the nanovirus, but the robots and the drones and the killer, you know, self-driving tanks, all these autonomous weapons that are constantly scouring the globe looking for humans to exterminate. The only way the humans could fight back was through this biological technology where they essentially create gigantic suits of parasitic organic armor and fight against these robots. And so you have, you know, it, it's not quite to the level of, of Kaiju, but certainly kind of Robotech level uh, robots versus monsters, except the monsters are the humans and they're the good guys. And so there's lots of different character classes. Uh, there's something called, well here, let me uh, show you some of this stuff. So um, some of the character classes include, uh, there's the Dread Guard, and the Dread Guard has like a suit of organic power armor. So they're just a slightly larger than a person. This is very classic Palladium style stuff. Think of Rift's power armor, where maybe there's, you know, a thing eight to 10 feet tall, maybe like a space marine from Warhammer, except instead of being made of, of metal and, and alloy and composite and things like that, it looks like this nasty organic monster, like a Zerg from Starcraft, except inside of it, 
there's a human pilot who is is uh, doing all the fighting. Uh, there are larger ones called an outrider, and an outrider uses a you know maybe they have just a little bit of organic armor, but really what they're doing is guiding this enormous monster covered with horns and fangs and tentacles that they ride like a horse, and uh, they ride that into battle. There's something like a pack master, which is you know again they've got kind of a smaller suit of armor. And their main weapon comes from having a bunch of little critters, these organic monsters that they have genetically engineered, that go out and, and they do their fighting. And so it's like a pet class. Uh, there's so many different ones. There's uh, uh, one called a saint. And the saint is, uh, you know, such a nasty body horror thing. Uh, in order to do all of this genetic engineering, uh, kind of the the original impetus that made all of this possible was they found this parasitic alien organism uh, and what what they have to do is um, remove all the inner kind of abdomen organs of a human and then stick this tentacled monstrosity in there and so the saint looks like a human but their midsection has six tentacles that come out and has the power to manipulate genes and genetics and to uh, create all of these big monsters and there's a bunch more there's you know probably eight or ten different character classes that all utilize this idea of bioengineered monster in different ways and so the game has horror on so many levels first of all there's just the idea that any metal you encounter in the world could kill you uh, if, uh, you know, the people from these caves, these hidden human communities, as they go out in search of food and resources, if they accidentally, you know, bring something back, but then, you, you know, they, they're trying to bring back food or they're trying to bring back supplies and somehow some metal gets in there, then as soon they they bring that back into the middle of their community and as soon as it touches human flesh, that metal will turn into a monster. And maybe it's as small as a pin or a needle. So it's just something little that's going to be creeping around inside that community, stabbing people, finding ways of killing them in the dark, one by one. Maybe it's going to be something larger. Uh, maybe you stumble across a cache of, you know, weapons or aluminum cans or whatever it is, uh, construction materials. And if they touch you or if you touch them, they turn into monsters. And so the threat can come from and otherwise innocuous situations become terrifying. Then on top of that, you stack the idea that you are being constantly hunted, that there are robots and drones. Stack on top of that, the horrible body horror bio monsters that you use and become in order to fight back against this thing work for me the really brilliant is that the AI controlling it is literally insane there's a lot of aspects of this kind of story that don't hold up to logic because you think well there's got to be a more efficient way of killing human beings than creating this weird nanovirus that turns metal into assassins the fact that the AI is insane uh, kind of makes all of that work that there are these cities you can go into that are filled with food and resources and knowledge and of course metal threats and that the AI who runs them is primarily concerned with keeping them stable and so you can actually this was part of the adventure that that I submitted to them um, you can have people go into these kind of ghost town cities and as long as they play along and don't rock the boat and they act like they're in a normal city the AI will just let it slide because that's what it wants is a normal city full of people. Uh, you've got another AI that is trying to create these gorgeous nature reserves full of, you know, verdant trees and flowers and beasts that roam wild. And it is a stark difference from the blasted wasteland everywhere else. And if you're able to get into one of these nature preserves, you'll be safe for a little while because that one personality of the AI isn't going to let 
the other personalities send their drones and robots in to kill you because they're trying to preserve nature. They want to keep these trees and these animals safe. And so there's just a lot of variety in the way the world is built and in the types of stories you can tell. And, um, and speaking of variety, there is an incredibly complete and exhaustive system to build your own monsters. Um, and it uses kind of the, the typical Palladium monster building system where it gives you a budget and then you buy the things, um, you know, with actual dollar amounts rather than points. Um, and, and, you know, however little sense that might make, it, it is a very complete system. And there's an incredible variety of weapons, of different kind of monster systems, propulsion systems, movement systems, sensory systems, all of these different things that it can do um, with this wonderful kind of Tyranid, Zerg, Xenomorph, bio-monster flavor to them. Do you want acid blood? Do you want horrible spines? Uh, do you want multiple limbs? Do you want insect wings? Like, no matter what kind of monster you can think, you can create in this system and then you can get inside of it and fly around and fight against bad guys. Uh, Splicers is just, like I said, it's one of my favorite Palladium games. I love all of the different horror elements. I love that it is able to combine so many different horror elements and still tell a really thrilling action-oriented adventure game. So check out Splicers. Um, I'm not going to review the Palladium rules because they are what they are, and we've talked about them before. Um, but the game itself, absolutely phenomenal. One of my favorites. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I encourage you to go check out my books. I've got a bunch of books that you can read, including some science fiction post-apocalyptic stuff um, and a lot of bioengineering in the Partials series. So if that kind of stuff floats your boat, check it out. Uh, there is a monster in the third Partials book called Ruins that is 100% inspired uh, by Splicers. Um, you know, and uh, so anyway, check that out. I'm also a professional game master. I can run a game for you and your friends, possibly Splicers or anything else that uh, blows your hair back. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dan Wells, and you are awesome.